some silver side, some shrimp, and on the bottom there is some krill that we've got. He is gonna get a broadcast feed today. Good morning, Carl. This is the California kelp forest. It has uh, about a dozen different species of fish that you might find off the west coast of the United States. We have a swell shark who's swimming up the window. This bright orange guy here is a Garibaldi damselfish. And this guy, Carl, is our male sheephead. It's feeding day today. Yeah, hi. He has learned all on his own that this green lid seems to mean food. And he will follow it around, even though I never, ever taught him that. <laughs> They do have territories, so they're not the kind of fish that you would see schooling in, in big clusters. In this case, they have the male, who's, in, who's sort of in charge of an area, and then there are females who would live within that area. One interesting fact about Carl is that he started out as a female and turned into a male. This species will start out as a female, and the most dominant one can turn into a male if there's no other male around. It's not that uncommon in the fish world. Carl is very smart. He's very territorial, and we are just hanging out in his world. So Carl is just chasing the fish around who are trying to eat right now. That's what he's doing. Leave them be. <laughs> he's an anything goes kind of fish. We will be doing a maintenance dive in here to clean the windows, clean the rock work. Hello, my darling. Y'all need to move. Come on. Well, hello. All right, little dude. Carl makes our dives a little more interesting. You need to move. Shoot. I'm getting into his space, and he's going to let me know that. Hey! <laughs> dude. Get out of the way. When a sheephead turns from a female into a male, it takes somewhere between five days to two weeks. Their internal organs change from female to male organs, and they do get even bigger. They start off in this kind of rosy pink color, and as they transform, they get sort of a black front and back and a, a pinkish orange middle section. So now that we have a male and two females, it would be really cool if we saw breeding behavior. It would mean that we were doing our jobs right. We're grabbing some food for our uh, Japanese spider crabs. We have some whole shrimp, some pieces of clam, and some small fish, silver sides. These Japanese spider crabs are found in the northern Pacific Ocean, so really deep, very cold water. This exhibit is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's one of the coldest exhibits at the aquarium. They're actually fairly small for their species. These guys can get up to over 10 feet across, almost the size of a small car. We're going to do a quick physical examination of our spider crab. And we'll just gently guide him up to the surface. So this crab is a female, and her identifier is orange and black. And we can see by these markings right on this left leg back here. So these claws are still fairly powerful. They would certainly hurt if they pinched onto you but as long as we keep out of their way. These crabs are also fairly slow moving, so we don't have to worry about a quick lunge from the crab. With a quick visual check, we just want to make sure that there's no soft spots, no abnormalities in her shell, and everything looks like it checks out fine with her. We have one of our molts, yellow, that is currently on exhibit, has molted out of his shell. 
So when these guys molt their shell, they'll be very soft and not protected. We'll put an acrylic box over them, keep them safe from any of the other crabs. Japanese spider crabs can be cannibalistic if they can find an easy meal. So I'm going to load this into our set of tongs, clamp down on it, and bring it over to our spider crab right here. And it's going to take him a minute to uh, realize that it's food. Uh, they find their food mostly by smell. And then he's going to kind of wrap around it and grab that piece. Or, you know, just drop it and, you know, try to eat the tongs instead. That, that also works. Here we have two that are kind of competing over the same piece of food. So I'm going to quickly get uh, another piece of shrimp down to this guy. And hopefully he'll realize he has a better option than trying to steal it. There you can see. The reason we tongue feed them is we want to make sure that everybody is eating so that we can actually record it and keep track. Before they molt or shed their shell, uh, they'll go off food for a little while. Usually we can tell who's about to molt. We look for signs of lack of activity, lack of appetite, and as we start to notice these things, we'll kind of keep a closer eye on the crabs. We do want to make sure that the crabs won't go after an easy target as that soft crab. All of our spider crabs got at least one piece, and uh, that's really all they'll need. They seem nice and happy.